This is the story of Toyota. Hello, I'm Alec Murdoch, and welcome to an inspirational story of a company created by people of great vision, unshakable character, and courage. The story of Toyota is very much a family saga, steeped in tradition. So, how did Toyota transform a small Japanese loom company into an international corporation? The journey began with a young carpenter apprentice, Sakichi Toyota, and his burning desire to fulfill his dream. In the West, the Industrial Revolution was erupting. It was a time of innovation and invention. For Japan to compete, it had to join the revolution or forever be left behind. So when Japan put the call out for inventors, no one answered quicker than Sakichi Toyota. As I watched my mother weaving, I saw her working so hard, too hard. In an instant, I saw my destiny. I would invent a better loom. Against his father's wishes, in his spare time, he sketched his ideas and built test looms, leaving little time for carpentry. His hard work was finally rewarded in 1891. At the age of 24, he patented his first invention, a wooden, manually operated loom. For the next three years, he kept working, continually making improvements. By 1894, he had invented a machine that would wind yarn onto a reel. This invention led to a profitable company. And three years later, his hard work paid off again, when he invented Japan's first automatic loom. With success at hand, the shadow of turmoil loomed on the horizon. Recession soon devastated the Japanese economy. Sakichi Toyota's unwavering commitment to spending vital funds on research and development was blamed for the company's poor financial performance. In 1910, Sakichi Toyota was forced to resign from his own company. He lost his factory, his employees, and the rights to many of the machines he had invented. 20 years of dedication and hard work were suddenly gone. Deeply depressed, Sakichi Toyota considered giving up. He was finding destiny to be a hard taskmaster. Unsure of his future, Sakichi Toyota traveled to the United States. He was amazed at the industrial advances he saw. One item in particular captured his attention and ignited a dream a new vision, the automobile. Inspired by his trip to America, Sakichi Toyota returned to Japan and began again. With hard work and determination, he formed a new company, Toyota Spinning and Weaving. This new company sold the cloth it manufactured. Now with a steady income, Sakichi was free to once again perfect his fully automatic loom and dream of building an automobile. Joining him was his son, Kiichiro Toyota, a young engineer fresh out of college. Kiichiro, like his father, was also a man of vision. I reply by saying, my father was a man of vision. To me, his most valuable quality was his will to make every effort to achieve a single objective. My destiny was to take his vision and build Japan's first automobile. Sakichi Toyota's dream of building an automobile was one that few thought would ever be reached. But that was about to change. In 1929, Sakichi Toyota sold the rights to his fully automatic loom for one million yen, which he offered to his son under one condition. 
use it all for research on the production of the automobile. Kiichiro Toyota had his reservations, but he put them aside, embraced his father's dream, and took up the challenge. He began the process by visiting the premier automotive manufacturers in America, like his father had. He came back to Japan, convinced he could build an automobile. A small corner of Toyota Automatic Loom Works, with reluctant family approval and funding, Kiichiro Toyota and his newly assembled team of engineers rolled up their sleeves, and in 1930 began the difficult task of building Japan's first car for the masses. Kiichiro was now more determined than ever to see the vision of his father fulfilled. For the next three years, we threw ourselves into our work. But enthusiasm could not make up for the lack of basic technology and experience, nor the fact that my family and management of the company were less than enthusiastic about our endeavors. Toyota Automatic Loom Works established an automobile department in 1933. By the following year, Kiichiro Toyota's team had developed Japan's first prototype automobile engine. In 1935, they accomplished the almost impossible. The creation of Toyota's first prototype automobile. The Model A1, conceived, designed, and built from scratch in just five years. Toyota was once again on the road to success, but this time, instead of looms making cloth, it was a factory manufacturing automobiles. They now had a new product and a new product name, Toyota. Changing the name from Toyoda to Toyota in Japanese required fewer brush strokes, and the Toyota family liked the way it looked. The following year marked the birth of Toyota Motor Corporation which laid the groundwork for decades of industry leadership. The next step was to set up a network of dealerships all across Japan. The car was an instant success, and it soon became clear that another manufacturing plant was needed. To raise the necessary funds, Kiichiro Toyota sold shares in a new company, Toyota Motor Company Limited. The new plant was built in Koromo, Japan, now known as Toyota City. Toyota Motor Company began with great enthusiasm and excitement. By the late 40s, global events brought Toyota close to bankruptcy, and Kiichiro Toyota was forced to cut workers' pay. Two years later, the company closed two facilities, and 1,600 workers were asked to resign. Debts continued to mount as auto union workers went on strike and brought production to a halt. As a result, Kiichiro Toyota resigned. With the Koromo factory operating at full capacity, Toyota was back on the road to profitability within a few years. They had lost a lot of ground, but they were determined to catch up. A.G. Toyota, Kiichiro Toyota's cousin, had been in charge of manufacturing Toyota's first car. In fact, he was the department's first employee at the new location. A.G. Toyota had been given the task of upgrading Japan's automaking technology. To oversee his plans, he appointed Taiichi Ono, a section chief of the engine machine shop. Taiichi had begun his career at Toyota spinning and weaving. And like Sakichi Toyota, he had a passion for efficiency. The job of improving Toyota's productivity was enormous. Taiichi Ono discovered that the company needed to focus not on the people, but on the process. Toyota no sensei se o takameru shigoto wa subarashii mono deshita. I had been told that American workers on average are nine times as productive as the Japanese. The difference was not in the people, but in the process. So Toyota has to learn to work smarter, or as Sakichi Toyota would say, be an innovative and creative thinker. Together, A.G. Toyota and Taiichi Ono examined every aspect of the plant. In the factory, they set up the machines in the order they were used. 
Thus, production flowed more smoothly and productivity increased. This system, which came to be known as the Toyota Production System, was paving the way for the company's success in the automotive industry. By the mid-50s, Toyota was the leading Japanese auto manufacturer. Looking for new horizons, Toyota set its sights on the global marketplace. In 1955, Shotaro Kamiya was president of Toyota Motor Sales Company Limited. He had just returned from a visit to the United States, where he found a growing number of small European import cars alongside the big Detroit models. America ni kita toki, suwarashi hanne o mimashita. It seemed as if every American family wanted two cars, but they could only afford one American car. We knew that the time was right for Toyota to come to America because we knew we could build a more affordable car. The car Toyota would ship was the Toyopet Crown. The company believed international success and acceptance was just around the corner. In 1957, Toyota became a global company when Toyota Motor Sales USA was formed. Within a year, the first dealership was opened in Hollywood, California. The cars were lined up and ready to sell. They waited for the rush of customers that never came. Disaster. Less than 300 cars were sold the first year. All the dreams and expectations were replaced by failure and frustration. The Toyopet Crown was a good vehicle for the moderate speeds of Japanese roads. But when the Crown got on American highways, it lost power, overheated, and used far too much gas and oil. Committed to success in America, Toyota would not give up. Once again, they had learned a valuable lesson. They would need to build a car specifically for the American road. Overseeing this vital project was Kiichiro Toyota's eldest son, Shoichiro Toyota. It was Shoichiro who implemented what would become known as Toyota's total quality control. This was to prove an effective measure not only for the U.S., but also for other markets. Thus began the first stage of Toyota's transformation into a global company, export market development. In the 1950s, the company began to export its vehicles to such geographically diverse locations as the United States, Brazil, Taiwan, Saudi Arabia, Australia, and Thailand. Toyota Toyota, kalite hayatınızı değiştirir. The company's export strategy was based on the principle of Genshi Genbutsu. Go to the source to find the facts you need to make a correct decision. And so Toyota did extensive research into the needs of consumers in their various export markets. The result? International success and acceptance. There's a new hot one on the American road, the Toyota Corona. And the editors of Motor Trend report Corona is miles ahead of competition in performance. The introduction of the Corona for the American market brought success that went beyond sales. In 1965, Toyota Motor Company was awarded the Deming Application Prize, a prestigious award given each year to the Japanese company with the most successful quality control system. In 1966, Toyota introduced the Corolla. The company was on the move. Hey, what's a Corolla? A new car! A new low-priced economy car. From Toyota! The new one from Toyota. 
The oil crisis of the 1970s boosted the demand for smaller, more fuel-efficient cars. This proved to be a windfall for Toyota, which was well prepared to respond to the needs of the marketplace. Soon another challenge arose. Some countries resisted importing large numbers of cars from foreign manufacturers. They developed localization plans to protect their own auto industries. Manufacturers were required to increase the local content of their vehicles by buying more parts from local suppliers. And so, Toyota began to assemble its vehicles overseas rather than exporting finished vehicles from Japan. By the 1980s, Toyota's dedication to research, its commitment to total quality control, and its philosophy of Kaizen, or continuous improvement, now placed it in a position to enter the second stage of its development as a global company, large-scale manufacturing in other countries. In 1984, Toyota opened the new United Motor Manufacturing Plant in the United States. It was a joint venture with General Motors, this plant presented a golden opportunity to put the Toyota production system, or TPS, to the test outside Japan. TPS is built on the philosophy of mutual respect and trust between management and employees, and empowerment of team members. At the time, these were fairly radical concepts in the U.S., where adversarial layered relationships had been the norm. Numi's ultimate success set the stage for applying TPS worldwide. Toyota Motor Manufacturing Kentucky started operations in 1988. It was the first American plant entirely owned and operated by Toyota. TMMK remains the company's largest manufacturing facility outside Japan. That same year, Toyota Motor Manufacturing Canada began building the Corolla and the Kuotsui Motors plant in Taiwan started up. By the end of the 1980s, Toyota was manufacturing and marketing in a wide variety of countries in every major region of the world. Toyota's luxury division, Lexus, was launched in 1989. Since that time, Lexus has rewritten the luxury automotive record books for customer satisfaction and quality. Lexus continues to lead the way in innovation and technology for luxury nameplates. The 1990s began the third stage of Toyota's development. A sharp increase in the value of the yen put Toyota's exports at a price disadvantage. So the company responded with a new global business plan that included the transfer of even more production overseas. Full-scale globalization. The company reformulated its model lineup plan, developing unique models for particular markets and selecting appropriate models for local production. This was accompanied by a large expansion in Toyota's global marketing, distribution, and sales network. In 1992, vehicle production began at Toyota Motor Manufacturing United Kingdom. Two years later, the joint venture Toyota saw plant started up in Turkey. 97 was the startup year for the Toyota Motor Thailand Gateway plant, and in South America, for Toyota Argentina. 98 was also the startup year for Toyota Do Brazil, as well as Toyota Motor Manufacturing Indiana and West Virginia plants, rounding out a decade of worldwide expansion of manufacturing, marketing, distribution, and sales. The joint venture Toyota Curlis Car Motor Plant was established in India in 1999. At the start of the 21st century, there's been no let up in the globalization of Toyota. Manufacturing plants started up in France, Poland, and Sichuan, China. More production is scheduled to begin in Tianjin, China, as well as Toyota Motor Manufacturing Alabama and a Toyota Peugeot joint venture in the Czech Republic. By the end of 2001, Toyota vehicle sales in the world's largest market, North America, had increased to nearly 2 million units per year. Sales in Europe had grown to about two-thirds of a million units annually. Sales were also on the upswing in Latin America and the Middle East. With its emergence as a diversified global corporate leader, Toyota has established a common set of values, beliefs, and business methods that act as the lifeblood of the company. 
Collectively, they're known as the Toyota Way. The Toyota Way is supported by two main pillars, continuous improvement and respect for people. It defines how the people of Toyota perform and behave in order to deliver the company's values to customers, shareholders, associates, business partners, and the global community. Today, Toyota is one of the world's largest automakers. Toyota's various companies have design, engineering, manufacturing, marketing, distribution, and sales facilities in over 160 countries, employing tens of thousands of associates. Toyota, its dealers, and all other business partners are dedicated to providing the highest level of customer satisfaction everywhere around the world.